Welcome to the first uh, Corgi Hollows podcast with Costanza and myself, Ed, and Mom has a book in mind. Uh, We're going to talk about A Foreign Devil in China by John C. Pollock. This book is an autobiography of a doctor by the name of Nelson Bell, who just happens to be the father of Ruth Bell Graham. She was the wife of the very famous Billy Graham, an evangelist through the second half of the 20th century. Nelson Bell was not well known, but he was quite an amazing individual. He was a medical doctor. He grew up in the South, and (coughs) he um, served as a military, I think it was Navy, Maybe I can't remember from the beginning of the book what he served, but um, he was military for the First World War and got his medical training as a medical doctor, a surgeon, and he went to China as a missionary and lived in China for 25 years. And that's where Ruth was born. Any questions about that? (laughs) (laughs) Well, are there any real highlights from the book? Well, I was kind of turned off at the very beginning because I found out that he was a member of a secret society. Oh boy, I hope we're going to be talking a lot about this on this show, aren't we? (laughs) (laughs) And that bothered me. But after reading and getting into the story, he showed that he really was very committed to the Lord. He did hours of Bible study every day. His wife, Virginia, was very, very careful about what she allowed in the home Um, I kind of laughed because there were two books that came out and people had sent these books in the 30s over to China and Virginia, Mrs. Bell, threw them out or I guess she threw them into the fire and that was one of them was Gone with the Wind (laughs) and the other one was The Grapes of Wrath (laughs) because those were just not up to her standards as a (laughs) Christian mother. So that was kind of interesting, and I can relate to to some of that. Yeah, yeah. Any other interesting thoughts or questions that you might have? Or what's your favorite scene in the book? Is it just a kind of a a narrative, or is it just, is it stories or biography kind of? I think that the man who wrote it, he was a British author, and he took boxes of letters. And if you have 25 years of letters back in the day when telephone was impossible across to China, it gave a very clear picture, a very comprehensive picture of what their life was like. Mm -hmm. Nelson Bell was a very skilled doctor, and some of the scenes that stand out are just vignettes of his operations that he did on people. Uh, One woman had a, a tumor that she weighed, uh... The tumor weighed 98 pounds, and so when he removed it, she weighed 94 pounds. Now, that's hard to believe, but... <laughs> what did this tumor look like? Was it like a, a, an orb she, off her body? Or I don't like... know. <laughs> <laughs> she, they said that she um, couldn't even walk balanced afterwards. She was so used to carrying that weight. Huh. More than twice, more than, more than her weight she carried. She was 94 pounds, and the tumor was 98 pounds. Oh, wow. And so it's just hard to believe that, but she, um, he, he removed that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. And other things that he did, just horrendous things that happened in um, Chinese culture in the 20s and 30s was still pretty barbaric, I have to say. Lots of beheadings. There were bandits that would slice off parts of your body and send it to your relatives. And he would often try to sew those things on again. Fascinating, huh? Wow. <laughs> it's quite the story. That's... Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting, a little bit. <laughs> but he was a doctor and he had to do that kind of thing. Yeah. We've progressed a ways. <laughs> <laughs> we have progressed a ways. And he talked about another doctor that came and joined him who... I think you'd pronounce his name Geezer, and I know that that family is from Wheaton, where I went to school one year. At least they came back to Wheaton and settled there, and he became quite a prominent eye surgeon due to his experience in China. Apparently there were quite a few eye problems in China. So that was interesting. 
Another thing that Nelson Bell, Dr. Bell said that people, well, he didn't say it, but people said of him that he got 70 seconds out of every minute. <laughs> and he was so efficient. He would get up in the morning and have his hours of Bible study, and then he'd go to the hospital. He would operate literally like a madman, just just dozens of operations, um, and finish by noon. No one, they said, could fit so much in a day as Nelson Bell. <laughs> so he must have been an incredibly intelligent person, very capable, and he would give detailed dictations during his operations of what was going on. And people, there was a nurse that would write this down, what he said, descriptions of how the operations went, and he had an unbelievable success rate for people getting better after he operated on mm. them. And he said many of the cases were so close to death, he literally sal saved them from the door, death's door. Mm. So that that's very interesting to me. And then, of course, that's all about him. But um, his daughter, Ruth Bell, uh, she went to Wheaton College, and there she met Billy Graham. And, of course, Billy Graham is far more famous than Dr. Nelson Bell. <laughs> but um, I sometimes wonder. He, Dr. Bell did a, a great work in China. He was with the Presbyterian Church at the time. And um, sounds like it was a very biblical-based mission, uh, very much a, an emphasis on Scripture and preaching the Scripture and actually very much a missionary work leading people to Christ some of the stories there were at least three or four stories that I can recall of how people became believers and some of them were his patients and some of them were servants that worked for her, the Bell family um, just very very interesting and, and very effective ministry mm -hmm. would you like to read it? well sewing body parts back onto people <laughs> it's not that. it's not gory <laughs> no it just it's just the description but it, it's a description of the life there in, yeah in china and uh -huh. i think that's very valuable probably a little reminiscent of in of the sixth happiness or uh gladys aylward's uh recountings yeah and pearl buck they talk they mention pearl buck often but he talked too, and this is a subject that fascinates me personally, um, theologically. She was raised by mostly by a nanny, even though her parents were also missionaries. And uh, but Pearl Buck had a very different view of missionaries, and she had a very negative view. And it came out in her writings of how um, she, she just really did not I don't believe she was a Christian I think she she might have called herself a Christian but I think she became more um, Eastern in her thinking and maybe closer to the New Age philosophies that we can study if we want to mm. <laughs> um, but she had a huge effect and she was a great writer she uh, was acclaimed as a writer but her experience, I've read several of her books and, and her descriptions of life in China are fascinating, um, perhaps somewhat romanticized. <laughs> um, this, A Foreign Devil in China by John C. Pollock, it does not romanticize life in China. And um, I actually haven't finished the book yet, so I know that um, there's incredible things that happen um, with the Boxer Revolution, Chiang Kai-shek, and then the communist revolution. So um, these things are, are you know, I, are all part of that time frame. Mm -hmm. And um, the Stams were killed at that time. Uh, murders all over. How the Bells survived this, I, I'm not exactly sure, but their mission was very careful to call them out of China when things were looking a little bit more dicey. Right. But they did lose a child. One of their their children did die. Not, uh, not because from disease. of no. It was a uh, no. It was not from well. It was from disease. It wasn't from a war. Right. And right. it was a small baby that didn't mm -hmm. make it. Right. 
because of the conditions. That was very heartbreaking. So yeah, that was that was it. This would I, I think it's a good book. It's a it's an interesting book. Um there is another missionary, Pauline Yeah, some, uh, Hamilton. Hamilton, that's Pauline it. Hamilton. She, she went to went China. A little bit later though. She was in the fifties when she yes, went. That was later. And that was interesting as well what she talked about and she mostly served in Hong Kong, I thought. Yeah, I think she was in Hong Kong. Or but, I don't remember exactly where she was, but that she has an interesting story too. Uh huh. With China Inland Missions. Do you remember the name of that book that she wrote? That was about that she wrote. She was. Yeah, it was an she, autobiography. Yeah. Um. No, I don't remember. It was. That's a good book too. I was an interesting it's story. Still out at the library. At the, at the church. Uh mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Check it out, Pauline Hamilton. So who has since passed away, and so has Nelson Bell, I'm sure, and Ruth yeah. Bellgram has passed away. So and I think Billy Graham is like 98 years old, or maybe getting close to 100. He's yeah. very very old. So this is these are stories from a bygone era. Mm-hmm. But I don't think the principles have changed. I do believe that um, evangelism and telling about Christ. And ministering to people, healing them physically, and helping them physically, and then caring for their souls and their spirits. Um, those things don't change. That's that's an ongoing task and duty of us as believers. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening, and go ahead and like and subscribe if you want to for more videos, probably on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yes, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.